everyone, in module 12, we will be talking specifically about the spinal cord and the spinal nerves. In our first learning outcome, we will be covering only the spinal cord. Like I said previously, the central nervous system is going to be comprised of the brain and the spinal cord. Despite the fact that the two are going to be anatomically connected, the spinal cord and the brain they will show significant degrees of functional independence where the spinal cord is going to be far more than just this highway for information traveling to and from the brain, carrying the information to the brain, the sensory information, and taking the motor information away from the brain. We have covered already how most sensory data is going to be relayed to the brain, but the spinal cord is also going to be important because it can integrate and also process the information on its own. So let's talk a little bit about the anatomy of the spinal cord in the next few slides and some of the functions of it. It is true that when we describe the central nervous system, it is mainly concentrated on the structures of the brain, but the spinal cord is going to be this other major organ of the central nervous system. On this slide, what I wanna focus on is how the spinal cord is going to be located in this opening over here, which is called the vertebral foramen. So if you guys can recall when we were covering the vertebrae, so this would be the spinous process, this is the body, there was an opening on each of the vertebrae in which we call the vertebral foramen, but when we stacked all the vertebrae together, this opening continues and it becomes the vertebral canal, which is this opening right here down the middle. Therefore, the spinal cord is going to be a continuation of the brain. So your brain would be up here and your spinal cord will continue. It starts at the first opening in the skull, which is the foramen magnum. If you guys can recall, the foramen magnum was located on the occipital bone and then it travels all the way down until around L1, for example. Usually that's where it stops and we'll see on the next slide. But as it goes down, it will split and give rise to these collaterals that are called spinal nerves. And we will talk about them in the next few slides as well. I like this image here on the left because it shows the complexity of the spinal cord coming down the vertebral canal and the spinal nerves that are branching from the spinal cord and that will innervate all the muscles in the upper limb, the muscles in the lower limb, and also the organs that are present mostly in the abdominal area. Now, if we look at the image here in the middle, we can see the brain on both sides. This image, they added the sacrum over here together with the coccyx, but the spinal cord comes down through the vertebral canal, and it ends right over here before it gets to the sacrum. And what hangs from the end of the spinal cord are all these nerves over here, which we call the equina. So the horse's tail is what will hang at the end of the spinal cord. Now it's important to have an idea where your spinal cord ends, especially if you're performing what we call a spinal tap. So a spinal tap is going to be a test that's used to diagnose certain health conditions, and it's going to be performed right over here on the lower back, more specifically in the lumbar region. So there's going to be a puncture. You can see that the needle is going to be inserted into the space between the two lumbar bones to be able to remove a sample of the cerebrospinal fluid. Now notice how on this image, they're doing the spinal tap between L3 and L4. Now, like I said, it usually ends around L1, but just to be safe, some individuals might have it a little bit longer. So around L3 and L4, definitely there's no spinal cord anymore. Therefore, it's a safe spot to be able to remove the cerebral spinal fluid that's located in this space over here, which we call the epidural space. So the space that's located above the dura mater, which we will see later on. On this other image over here to the right, 
we can see how the spinal nerves are going to be exiting through these openings that's left from the combination of two vertebrae. So the superior vertebrae and the inferior vertebrae are going to leave this opening over here, which we talked already about, which is called the intervertebral foramen. So again, intervertebral between vertebrae and it's a hole. And you can see how the spinal nerves will come out through them. And then they will not just be this small little size. Notice how they go all the way. In this case, it's showing the upper limb. So they can be very, very long. We have covered previously how the spinal cord has this H shape structure in the middle. And this H shaped structure is formed by what we call the gray matter. So it will contain the cell bodies of the neurons in this location. And the rest is going to be formed by what we call the white matter. So all of this is white matter, which means that it's filled with axons of myelinated neurons. So neurons that have myelin, that's why it's called white matter because myelin is made up of lipid and lipid is white. With regards to the gray matter, it can be subdivided into regions that are usually referred to as horns. We're gonna have the posterior horn right over here, which is responsible for sensory processing. So the information that arrives from the peripheral nervous system arrives at the spinal cord through the posterior horn. Then we have the anterior horn, which sends out motor signals to the skeletal muscles. So this is exiting the spinal cord. And then we also have lateral horns, which are only found in the thoracic and the upper lumbar regions because those will innervate the organs and therefore they will send input to the autonomic nervous system, which we will cover in the last module of this course. Also, with regards to the gray matter, there are these fibers located right over here that communicate the right side of the spinal cord to the left side of the spinal cord, and these are called the gray commissures. So gray commissures are going to be composed of unmyelinated axons that cross from one side of the central nervous system to the other. And within the gray commissure, there's going to be this very narrow central cavity of the spinal cord, which is called the central canal. And through the central canal, you're going to have cerebral spinal fluid that will be circulating. Now we do have also myelinated fibers that are located in the white matter that will also cross from one side of the central nervous system to the other. And these are gonna be located right over here. And these are called commissural white fibers. Furthermore, on the spinal cord, we can see that there are these two grooves. There's going to be a dorsal or posterior median sulcus, and then a wider ventral or anterior median fissure, which run the length of the spinal cord, and it partially also divides it into a right and left halves, as we can see on this image. On the lab model, we can see these structures as well. We can see the dorsal roots. This would be your ventral root coming down over here. Therefore, this is your dorsal horn. This would be your ventral horn. And this over here is your lateral horn. All of this is your gray matter. And it communicates with both sides through the commissure, so the gray commissure. And in the middle, you have the opening, which is the central canal. This would be your white matter. And then these entries over here, this one would be your posterior median sulcus, and this is your anterior median fissure. How do I know that this is posterior and this is anterior? Well, the posterior will be towards the spinous process, which is right over here. Therefore, the anterior is on the opposite side. Like the brain, the neural tissue of the spinal cord is also going to be protected by the bone, which we covered already, which is the vertebrae, the meninges, and the cerebrospinal fluid. The tough dura mater is going to be the outer layer, as we can see over here, and it does not attach to the surrounding bone, but it will have 
this rather large epidural space that's going to be filled with this cushiony fat that we can see over here on the lab model. And it will also contain this network of veins that are represented over here. Actually, anesthetics are often injected into the epidural space to be able to block the nerve impulses in the spinal cord and therefore this helps to relieve the pain in the body regions inferior to the injection site. Now below the door, there's what we call the subdural space, which is very small. Then we have the arachnoid matter. Below the arachnoid matter, we have the subarachnoid space that's larger and it will be filled with cerebral spinal fluid. And the last layer of meningi is what we call the pia matter, which is going to go around the spinal cord and it's going to be continuous with the corresponding elements that's going to go around the brain. So as the spinal cord goes up to the brain, the pia matter, which is the meningeal layer that's hugging the spinal cord, it will be continuous with the brain. In addition, the pia mater, it sends out these lateral extensions that are called inticulate ligament that are actually going to help to anchor the spinal cord laterally to the duramater throughout the length of the spinal cord. So basically when you bend down and your spinal cord doesn't creep up, it's because it's being held by these lateral extensions that are called denticulate ligament. And you also have a denticulate ligament that's located posteriorly as we can see right over here. So just to review some of the structures that we have seen on the lab model, this will be your dorsal root, this would be your dorsal horn, this is your ventral root, therefore this is your ventral horn, and this would be your lateral horn. We can see the dura mater over here, this is your arachnoid mater, therefore the space in between them is the subdural space. Below the arachnoid, we have the subarachnoid space, which is all of this, filled with CSF. And this would be your pia mater that's hugging the spinal cord.